One delicious afternoon, I found myself totally alone with no kids, no husband at Chapters. And I was browsing the relationship section, which is seriously a favorite pastime of mine. And I came across a book title that literally made my heart start pounding. I grabbed it, slid down to the carpeted aisle, and spent about half an hour of glorious time reading this book, page after page of words that validated so much of what I had experienced all my life. What is this marvelous book I speak of? It's called The Highly Sensitive Person in Love. And she's written two other books that I also bought called The Highly Sensitive Person and The Highly Sensitive Child. I honestly cannot express the feeling of relief and validation that I felt when I read these books. Growing up, I knew that I was a sensitive person, but whether at home or at school or out in the world, it was never really a particularly good label. As the author confirms in her book, really the North American ideal personality is kind of tough, outgoing, pleasantly stimulated by bright lights and sounds. So this character trait that I had been born with, one that endowed me with a highly sensitive nervous system, had never been really celebrated or even encouraged. So here's some facts to help you understand what a highly sensitive person is and what I'm talking about. Number one, it is estimated that about 15 to 20% of the population has this sensitive trait. It's also interesting to note that many species of animals have the same percentage. Number two, you are born with it. So it's probably likely that you exhibited some of these tendencies as a child. For example, you had colic or kind of sensitive to clothing or food allergies. Number three, highly sensitive people are often overwhelmed after being in a highly stimulating environment for too long. Number four, they are often sensitive to pain, caffeine, fabrics, loud noises, temperature, basically all the five senses are heightened. Number five, they can be deeply moved by the arts or small emotional events. I know for me, I often tear up when I'm at the playground and I see a nice interaction between a parent and a child. And number six, they like their alone time. Not all are introverts, but a large percentage are. The great thing about this book is that she offers a really short self-assessment to see if you are highly sensitive. She also gives you a self-test for your partner. So even though you might not be identifying with what I'm talking about right now, you might notice some of those traits in your spouse. And that gets me to the second part of the video. What does this have to do with being married? Actually, being highly sensitive has huge implications for being married. Trust me, I know. As with any other path of personal development and awareness, just understanding your trait can help leaps and bounds when first, accepting yourself, and second, communicating your needs to your spouse. The general sense of being flawed that comes along with this personality trait can often cause a person to ignore their signals from their body and mind, causing unnecessary anxiety and frustration in the person, which can lead to a lot of conflict and disunity within the marriage. For a large part of our marriage, I just couldn't understand why I was constantly fiddling with the temperature in the car or adjusting the volume on the radio or why I just couldn't stand the feeling of my husband's unshaven chin against my skin. Honestly, I just felt annoying and weak and whiny and childish and picky. I would ignore my body signals that I was too tired or hungry to have a difficult conversation, which would lead to an explosive fight. I would force myself to watch violent and suspenseful movies with my husband and then later have nightmares and then later feel resentful for my husband for making me watch them. I wouldn't tell him that I didn't like the clone he was wearing or the type of shaving cream he was using, and then kind of avoid being around him, which obviously led to a lot of disunity and frustration for both of us. Once I came to realize that I didn't have to shove these feelings away, that I could accept my uniqueness and my differences, and even see my highly sensitive trait as a superpower. I could then communicate that to my husband and he wouldn't see my requests for small adjustments as criticisms or that he wasn't good enough for me. He could just see it like, oh, that's just what she needs. Let's move on with it. I understand that this is a really big topic and something that's becoming a lot more popular as more and more people read the book. So I hope I've been able to give you a 
good enough introduction into what it means to be a highly sensitive person and what it has to do with being in a marriage. I really hope to talk a lot more about the specifics in future videos and talk about what it means to be a highly sensitive person in love. If you identify with this trait and think that you might be a highly sensitive person, I am more than happy to talk to you. Thank you so much for watching and please give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and consider sharing it with other people so other people can figure it out for them. Themselves. I'll see you next week for another video. Bye!